you may well have seen in the media, um, you know, we've had, I, I think, you know, several of our, some of our largest clients that have postponed their involvement in ICE this year for, for, for lots of different reasons, really, but they tend to have, have been some of the largest, and I guess predominantly because of the logistical investment that they put into ICE this year. And if, if the current new dayline in April hasn't been totally optimal for their business, then they've made that decision not to be there. And I think that's been, that's been hard for all of us, really, but in many respects, we totally respect their decision. Um, I think, I guess there's an assumption that, that that's fairly representative of, of the wider ICE show, um, which isn't the case. There's still over 450 brands that, that are participating. Still roughly 75, 80% of, of ICE in terms of its size and scale uh, is what we'll be looking at for April. But I think those, those, those brands, the smaller collection of brands, have totally been some of our bigger names. They've been part of the fabric of ICE since the very beginning. Um, but, um, but, you know, they've had some of the some of the biggest challenges, I guess, with these new dates. And we try to work through with quite a lot of them to see how we can support and help. And we've, you know, we listen to them all the time. That was a big reason why we postponed the event from, from February to, to, to April initially was, was based on the kind of concerns, really starting with that group of our exhibitor base and then all the way through. Um, but obviously the new April dates that we could secure in Excel have, 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 have been a challenge for, for some of those bigger brands. So we respect their decision, we're supporting them. They are all already committed to 23, which is exciting. So um, as, uh, you know, as I'm saying to everyone, ICE will be a different experience this year. We will be back to business and full scale uh, for 23, but this year really it's about servicing the, the 450 exhibitors that are still very much part of the show. It's an interesting question because obviously the shift of um, uh, a large proportion of the land-based um, slot suppliers not being at ICE will mean that obviously it isn't quite as representative of the entire gaming ecosystem that it ordinarily is and obviously will be again in 23. So um, there is a shift, it will be different. It's not by design from our perspective. So we don't have a, um, a strategy this year to present more of the iGaming community. But obviously naturally because of what's happened, you know, there certainly will be a, a mix and a different experience. From our perspective though, obviously we are fully open and, and um, are inviting all of our buyers and, and attendees from the land-based community. There's a huge amount of content that's available on, on, uh, on the um, Vox proposition and also a huge amount of smaller uh, exhibitor content that sit within that sector. So no, not a specific design from us, but obviously how things will evolve and shape, we'll start to describe that to the industry so they know what's available, what's on offer. And we still hope and is our plan to be as representative as we can be for the entire gaming industry. I think with, with the live and certainly with the return to live um, since COVID, the focus has been very much on quality versus quantity. Uh, I think what we've seen in the exhibition industry, certainly in the wider clarion business, is somewhere between 70 and 80 percent of a um, pre-pandemic uh, volume of attendance. But what we have um, seen is either, at the worst case, a retain, um, we've retained the quality of the audience. In best case, we've improved that quality. So where we've seen a, a, a reduction in volume, we have certainly seen the buyers or the keen buyers attending the show. So that's very much what the evidence suggests so far with all the surveys we've been doing, looking at our registration patterns. We're, we're in a really strong position, both not only to get a good quality or a good volume, which as you've seen is in around about 75% of a normal ice show, which we would see as a success, but also an increase in that quality. Um, I think it's over 80% at the moment of that core um, response rate and the registration that are key decision makers. So really that kind of mix between quantity and quality really is where we're targeting. So I think really at this stage, if we were to achieve a 75% um, normal version of ICE in terms of the buyer volume, but improve on the decision making, I think actually we'll, everyone will have a great time. The kind of decision making that purchasing will be more of an express experience. Um, and it's only really logical to assume that's going to be the case. There are still restrictions in certain, in certain countries and, and, and uh, throughout the world. So traveling to London won't be for everyone this year, but it certainly appears to be for the majority, which is great. I think the, the, the Brexit conversation is interesting because it's, it's popped up in, in two or three, I guess, press releases from some of the brands that aren't this year, aren't attending this year. Um, and I think it's something that we've been very open and honest about with our exhibitor group. Those certainly the ones that um, come in and bring a lot of material and products um, 
and, and have a huge logistics operation to be into London. Um, obviously, we haven't run ICE yet in Brexit. We obviously have the April show coming up. So we've made a commitment to the industry really to do a full analysis post-show just to really better understand what impact it is having. Obviously, there are administrative processes that everyone is now having to adopt. From, from what I understand, I think the first time you do it, it's a little bit painful, but after that, it's fairly straightforward. But for some companies, because of the types of products they bring in, there may well be other implications. So we, we will, um, we're looking at it with a keen interest, obviously. It's been a big part of our ICE charter over the last 18 months uh, for the next few years to reduce the operating costs of our exhibitor base. So if they are starting to see some other costs increasing in other areas, if we can do anything about that, then we will. So it's certainly an interesting debate. Um, there's always been a hot topic of, of whether London still is the right location for ICE going forward. I think to date, it's, it's been very strongly that London still is. But if that changes after we look at Brexit, then that's something that we, you know, we are very open to looking at. We've always been firm with our commitment to the industry that we will, you know, as the custodians of the brand, um, if, if, if they wish us to look at alternatives in the future, then that's certainly what, we, what we're doing. So we were doing a lot of strategic research, both quantitative and qualitative, during the ICE show in April and post the show, and really getting amongst all that detail. And I think once we've got that, it'll help us shape what we need to do in the future to kind of avoid any of those unnecessary um, barriers, really.